I'm back. It's been a hot minute. So, hi. <laughs> um, so as you can see from the title, I will be doing a video on how I've grown out my hair. But before I get to that, I feel like there have been a lot of life updates. I do have a lot of videos that I have filmed, but honestly, it's been such a long time and they haven't been edited, so I don't know if they'll ever make it to the internet, but I figured I would do this for a fresh start. Quarantine and COVID have been really crazy. And normally I don't even have the space to film. One, because I basically do not live at home um, in Orange County. So I'm home right now, as you can see from my TBT background. I actually really do love being home and filming here because the lighting is great at this window. The background's nice and pretty and it just looks very nice. And when I'm in San Diego, I do have my room with my sister and that's really nice there as well. But something about this like whiter background is very nice. And then when I'm in Redlands, yes, I live in Redlands most of the time. Um, it's just like a messy, basically college room since we just don't have our adult space yet and all of that. So a lot of life updates, but anyways, yeah, normally my parents are both home. They're actually on my mom's birthday trip. So they'll be coming home later tonight. But normally my dad's working here and then my mom's working in the actual office and then I'm in the kitchen for the times that I am home. So it gets really crazy and I don't have a space to film or like take pictures for my Depop and Poshmark and all of that. So it's just been really, really crazy this year with all of the traveling normally that I've been do that I do or that I was traveling in the beginning of the year and then COVID happened and like everything. So like lots of things going on in my life as well. So I haven't been filming or editing, but I really want to get this video out because your girl is cutting her hair off next week. I've been wanting to film this video for like a year now and then I just did not prioritize it, did not come out, I didn't film it. So today is the day while I have some filming space and some motivation and a deadline because next week this is coming off and it's really scary and very exciting but I did want to get this video out because I know people are very curious about how I grew my hair out this long. So it's going to be a vlog style video. I remember when I was thinking about doing this video, I was like, I'm going to have makeup on, I look pretty. You know, my hair will be nice and like done up and I'll use my DSLR and all that. But nope, I'm on my G7X. My hair is ratty from a mini photo shoot yesterday. So the curls are like not there anymore. My face is crusty. This is like red and crusty and busty. And I've been putting Aquaphor to try to heal the skin faster. My lips are nasty. Like I have no makeup on my skin. Every, just everything about me is just so crusty right now but it's okay. <laughs> That's not the point of the video, but I figured I would go ahead and get it started while I am pre-shower because I'm gonna go take a shower. I figured that would be the best time to take you through my hair care routine and just like how I grew my hair out because that for some reason, which I get, is very interesting to people considering that I am about 5'7 and my hair touches the bottom of my butt. So my hair is about three feet long. I guess I'll get into the video now. My hair is three feet long. I've had pretty long hair for almost a decade now. I used to cut my hair all the time when I was younger, like to my shoulder. And then one day I was like, I want long, beautiful hair. And I feel the most comfortable in my long hair. But a few years ago, I went to the Philippines and had a really, really bad bleach job. So I just want to cut my hair off, restart it. Also just get a fresh start to my hair and regrow it and mix it up. I am very, very scared because I have attachment issues to my hair. And unfortunately, I do attach a lot of how I perceive myself like physically and like how I perceive my own beauty to my hair. So it's gonna be tough, but yeah, I, I am very, very excited. That's just like a quick history of my hair before I take you into just like the more just like product-based part of this video. And I've dyed my hair many, many colors. It has been like purple, over the bleach, I've had like rainbow streaks in it. I've dyed it with lemon juice. I've dyed it with just like semi-permanent dye. I've dyed it with box dye. I've gotten it at the salon to dye it back to black. I just, my hair has been through a lot, but at the point that it's at right now, half of it over here is like bleached from my, my bad bleach job. And then this is like virgin hair because I've been growing it out for about this December, it'll be three years, I believe. And my hair would probably be longer if the bleach had not just killed it and 
with a bad bleach job, like the ends just constantly are coming off. So I've been having like a natural chemical trim for the last few years, which is disgusting. And I've heard that like, I don't know if this is like science, but biologically, like some people just can't grow their hair that long. So if you feel discouraged that your hair isn't growing, it might just be because you can't. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, like if everyone can grow their hair out this long, but I'm pretty sure I know some people in my life like growing up where their hair would just not go past a certain length no matter how long they waited whereas with my hair and my sister both of us can just grow our hair out she has very very long hair right now as well and I also wanted to cut it because she's getting married next year so I want it to cut now so that it can grow out for her wedding so that was all over the place but just you know if you're trying all these tips on YouTube like I used to do when I was like 10 11 12 maybe your hair just cannot grow and that's okay. There are such things as extensions out there or just embracing, you know, the length that your hair can be at, but I don't want you to be discouraged if like, I mean, this video isn't really to show you tips. I'm just telling you how like I've upkept my hair. Yeah, that, that could also be one of your issues just to be very blatant because I know there's a lot of videos out there where it's like, oh, it's gonna work for you. It might not work for you and that's okay. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, I will show you guys some like better photos of my hair length and all of that and videos later. But after that long ass intro, this is what my hair looks like now, pre-shower. Um, as you can see, it's just parted in the middle. My hair is very like typical Asian black, Asian black brown. And it just has some texture from yesterday. And wow, I'm in, yeah, some PJs right now. So my hair is very, 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 very long. Um, not the healthiest. Again, half my hair is bleached off chemically, just like ruined, but this is like what that looks like. So the first thing, the first thing that I do if my hair is like this, or even if it's not, is I do try to brush it out. You want to start from bottom to top, especially if it's super, super knotted. So before I go into the shower, I just want to make sure that my hair is nice and smooth. It'll just make it easier for post shower when you're brushing your hair. And I just want to make sure that I do this to protect it and also just to make the post shower process and brushing better because at least it's already smooth. And at least my hair is not in as much of a vulnerable position because as most of you guys probably know, and if you don't, your hair is a lot weaker when it's wet. So we wanna prevent as much breakage. And that's more so if you have really healthy hair. My hair is dead, so like I don't care that much and I'm gonna cut it off. But just if you are trying to upkeep with your hair, I wanna make sure that it's not super, super tangly or else it is a nightmare. So I wanna make sure I brush it out. I've been using a wet brush for a couple of years now. Most of the products that I'm gonna show you guys are my tried and true holy grail on what I've been doing with my long hair. So I use a wet brush. I have a bunch of these at Target. They're like $10 and I think they're great for dry and wet hair. Prior to that, I was using like a paddle brush, which worked really well too. So anything like that, I like things that have bristles like this, but I know you can use a wide tooth comb. I just hate it because my hair is very, very thick. I just some more background on my hair. My hair is very thick and it runs in my family and coarse, which is weird because that's normally a term that you use for like curly hair, but I have very straight, thick, coarse, and semi-dry hair as well. Even when my hair is very, very healthy, like at its healthiest point, it's still not super silky. So that's just kind of the texture. That's the texture of my hair. And I used to think that was weird. I was like coarse, dry, even when it's healthy. Yeah, that's just how my hair is, but it's very, very, very thick. Okay, so now that my hair is like that, I'm gonna go hop into the shower and I will show you guys the products that I will use, that I use. But I'm gonna hop in the shower, do a shampoo, conditioner, and then I will also do a mask today and I'll show you what masks I use and recommendations that I have. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, so I'm gonna go shower and I will be back to show you guys all of my favorite products that I use for my hair. Until then, I will see you guys after my shower. Hi, voiceover Janelle here. 
So I don't know what happened with the clips, but they were all muffled. I think maybe my finger was on the mic, but basically what I was saying in this was that I'm not really bougie on the shampoo and conditioner. When I'm in Redlands, I just use the Moroccan oil, like Argan oil, OGX one, kind of whatever smells good at the drugstore. And then when I'm in OC, usually my mom has Pantene or herbal essences or whatever else also from the drugstore. I try to look at the label to see if it's sulfate free and all of that they did that they tell you online, but I kind of just use whatever and it seems to work. But I do want to delve into the world of more expensive shampoo and conditioner, like a dollar and a half sign, two dollar signs, just to see if there's a difference and maybe peruse into the world of function of beauty maybe i don't know we'll see how that goes but non-sponsored function of beauty but basically on a regular i just use cheap shampoo and conditioner so nothing fancy and then once i'm done and i hop out of the shower i just use a regular towel i try to squeeze out as much of the water as possible and then i just pat and squeeze with my towel i do not rub it back and forth like i used to when i was younger i think we all used to do that and then I still do the twist turban thing, which I know you shouldn't do, but I do. And that's just how it be sometimes. That's probably why I have a receding hairline and bald spots. I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I'm not. Someone said that one time at Justin and now I'm like self-conscious. So I got the big, big, big kahuna. Ew, look at that. I had to cut off one of my nails. So I will be putting this in my hair, but before then, brushing your hair when you have very long hair you're constantly brushing it or you constantly have knots either way so i'm gonna do the same thing i did earlier and brush my hair and as you can see i'm not really having trouble with it one because i use a wet brush two because i try to be gentle with my hair so brush from down up three i brushed my hair prior to my shower which is making this easier less breakage less of a headache and a heartache and four when i dried my hair i patted it dry and i didn't like ruffle it so it's still in you know pretty good condition so it just makes everything so much easier so if you follow those pre-shower steps it'll make everything just like a little bit easier on you and for your hair again my hair is already dead so like i'm really not trying to take care of too many things but also you know i still want to try to manage what i have left before i regrow out my hair so you can see and I'm trying to just like show you throughout this video just how long my hair is like It's crazy long. So once I have my hair brushed out I want to give it a good good brush Take your favorite Hair mask and Put that into your hair another one that I used to use a lot before I started using this one I've used a bunch of random ones, drugstore ones. Like I've tried like L'Oreal ones in the drugstore, random ones from CVS throughout the years, like your basic brands. The ones that you've seen in the drugstores, I've probably tried. And you're just gonna lather it on the bottom half. So I try to put it, ooh, that was bad. You should probably start from bottom up too. Um, I try to do it from ear down. So you can split your hair get it through. If you want, you can use a wide tooth comb or an old brush and you can brush it in as well. I'm okay just using my fingers. And again, I go through a ton of this because I have a butt ton of hair. And just make sure you run it through. Another one of my favorites, as I was saying earlier, was also the Moroccan Argan Oil or Moroccan Hair Mask. And I really, really love the smell of it. It made my hair very soft but to each their own. That's why I keep mentioning my hair texture because besides just potentially not being able to grow your hair as long as me, just strictly for biological reasons. Another thing is like my hair texture could be completely different from yours, which obviously affects the types of products you're gonna use. So this has been working really well for my hair. It's on the drier end, it's straight, it's thick, it's Asian, which makes a difference as well. Once I get that through, I like to put it up so I'm just going to just put it in a bun. Sometimes I'll braid it, just any way to put it up. I'm gonna leave it in for as long as possible. I like to leave it in for at least 30 minutes to an hour, but if I'm not doing anything, like that'll be in there for hours, like legitimate hours. I figured while I was just letting this all soak in, I would continue to just talk to you guys since I haven't been 
camera in a while. A couple of other things on how to maximize a hair mask. Whew, why am I out of breath? I need to start working out again. Anyways, so in college when my hair was very, very, very brittle and dry after it got bleached, what I used to do as well was put coconut oil. I don't love coconut oil. It doesn't work super, super well for my hair and it's hard to get it out. So I don't love that, but I know a lot of people do and I used to do that in college. Same thing, I would heat up some coconut oil, make it warm, run it through my hair and then put a bag over it to trap the heat in and I would sleep in that. And I would also do the same thing with hair masks. And you can still do that now. I just don't think it's necessary for me. And I hated sleeping with that in, but I just, my hair was falling out. So another thing you can do while you're waiting for it to just process and soak in is put a shower cap or just a supermarket plastic bag if you have some lying around. I know we are reusable bags now, but I know sometimes I still go to the grocery store and I get bags. So you can use that for your hair. You can use it for little trash cans, but just to like help it, you can also just cover it. Again, I don't feel the need to. That's another tip. And sleeping with your hair in braids is, has also been helpful so that my hair doesn't wake up. My hair doesn't wake up. So I don't wake up with my hair tangled everywhere. I hate that. So sometimes I try to sleep with my hair in a braid just so that when I wake up in the morning, it's just like not crazy and knotted, especially when your hair is as long as mine. And if you just wanna keep your hair in good condition, that's another thing. Um, I've heard silk pillows. I have a mini travel size one that one of my friends gave me for my birthday and it's really nice. So those are a couple of other options that you can think about if you're trying to grow your hair out or trying to maintain the integrity of your hair currently. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for this to process and I will see you guys in an hour or two or wherever. Um, I probably won't keep it for too long just because I wanna keep this video going while there's still sunlight. So I will see you guys in probably like an hour <laughs> uh but yeah i'm just gonna i'm gonna let this do a thing okay hello welcome to my living room dining room area my hair is down as you can see and i just rinsed it out i used cold water i oh it was kind of warm in the beginning then i moved it and i rinsed it out with cold water because that's what they tell you to do so that's what i do and this next step should not surprise you guys, brush your hair. So I'm back on the brushing and it's, it gets easier every time cause now my hair is like conditioned and smooth and silky. Like it is just running through my hair. I don't know if you can feel it, it's just like, why did I just ask you if you could feel it? Obviously you can't, I can feel it. It feels very, very nice and silky and conditioned and smooth. It's gonna brush my hair out. And I guess just like finish up this part of the video. There was one thing that I was thinking of while I was waiting for my hair to get conditioned. And I will show you guys my hair once it's dry, but I'm just gonna, while I'm doing this, continue on with my long hair rambling. So one of the biggest things that people always tell you and people with like not long hair, that is what gets me. Like all these people on the internet for like the last decade that I've been watching hair videos, they always tell you, cut your hair every blah, 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 and you'll have long hair. Coming from someone who has had long hair for so long, like, <laughs> okay, I understand where they're coming from, but it just like irks me sometimes. I know what they mean when they say to cut your hair every four to six weeks to get a trim. They mean if you want healthy hair. But guess what? Your hair grows depending on the person. Probably like a fourth of an inch, and if you're lucky, like super lucky, maybe an inch, but usually like a fourth to half an inch every month. If you're trimming off one or two inches, even every six weeks, like your hair is never gonna grow. Like your hair will be stuck at this length forever. And you're gonna be a fool wondering why your hair isn't growing. That's why it's not growing, girl, because you keep freaking cutting it off. So yes, if you want healthy hair, you know, trim your ends, but you don't need to trim your hair every four to six weeks. One, it's a waste of your money. In my opinion, I know this is really abrasive, but I'm just very passionate. Two, like you're never gonna grow your hair out in terms of length, but I will say the quality of your hair will probably be better because there's less split ends. But if you get your hair cut, you know, two or three times a year, like that should be fine. I haven't cut my hair in years, but <laughs> that's just a whole other issue. If you want your hair to grow, you cannot cut your hair. Like it just is common sense. It's kind of like when people talk about fitness and calories and like, there are healthy ways to do it, but like in order for you to lose weight, you have to be in a deficit, like a caloric deficit. So kind of in the same vein, I don't know if this makes sense, but if you want your hair to grow, you cannot be putting it in a deficit. So it's kind of the opposite. Like if you want your hair to grow, say six inches in a year, you can't be cutting your hair 
two inches every six weeks. Like it's not going to grow in terms of length. So that's just one thing I'm very passionate about. Whenever I hear people talk about that, especially people with not even long hair, I'm like, girl, you have no business. And also it doesn't make sense, like logistically speaking. So the two things to take out of that before I just like end this part of the video is if you want to grow hair, my wonder, my number one tip, like number one out of anything, because I've basically just shown you my hair routine, but this is like my number one not secret tip is you cannot cut your hair. Like you can't keep cutting your hair every single month or every single three months and cutting off like a foot of your hair, like it's never gonna grow. So make sure you get, you know, your trims if you want to maintain healthy long hair. Like if you're willing to wait a little bit longer um, for your hair to grow in inches, like to see the results of having longer hair, then you can get it trimmed more often. But if you're good and your hair isn't a, like, you're fine with the quality of your hair, you don't need a trim, then don't do it. Because your hair, yeah, like if you don't cut your hair for a year, then it'll, it'll grow. I mean, your hair will go regardless, but I mean like you'll be able to actually see the length of it. So like I haven't cut my hair in like a few years and like, but granted the quality of my hair is probably not as good as someone who has a little bit of like shorter length but healthier hair because they've been trimming it. So that's just some things to think about. I know that was like very, very aggressive. So I apologize, but that is just like something I hear all the time. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. If you want healthier hair, if your hair is like having split ends, but if you're just trying to grow hair for aesthetics and length and you, you're able to grow your hair, then you cannot cut it. Okay. That was my big tip. That was my big secret of a long-haired hoe. Okay, this is random, but I decided to film it since I'm already filming for today. Also, my hair always looks like I have like a 10 head when it's wet for some reason. Justine and John were home this weekend and we went to Mitsua and we got snacks and Justine got this one. I've never tried it. It's called Gummy Choco. And I guess the inside is like green grape jelly flavored. The outside's chocolate and it kind of looks like, like a raisin it. So we're gonna try it on camera. She forgot it, so I'm reaping her misfortunes right now. She says it's really good. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, John said the inside's like a gummy, but yeah, when I bite into it, the texture is like a raisinet. I don't know if I like that. I see what she means though. Hmm. I don't know. It is very similar to the raisinet family, but like gummy. Mm. I don't know. I'm gonna keep trying it. I don't think I love it though. Sorry, Justine. Hmm. Hmm, it's okay. I don't know if I'd get it again though.